welcome to the Feed You podcast, giving you the real scoop on raising your business to new heights. Expert education, inspiration, and motivation to fuel your purpose, your passion, and your profits. Here's your host, Elisa Connor. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Feed You podcast. It is the first full week of April, and I am so grateful you guys are here. And I hope that you're staying healthy and that uh, you are in some way still connecting with family, friends, and uh, even customers. This week, I wanted to talk about, there's a, there's a lot of concern with, you know, COVID going on that um, with, with small businesses um, not being able to make revenue, not be able to work, all of those different things. And so I wanted to take a different spin on that because I'm always a firm believer, if you've listened to the show for a while, that where you focus your attention is what creates your reality. And I, um, for that reason, <laughs> focus on what I can control and what I can uh, do to make my experience as positive as possible. And so I wanted to be able to offer that to you and give you guys something else to focus on besides what's happening right now in our world. It is definitely um, one for the history books and it would be very easy to be pulled into negative news, negative statistics, um, and just become kind of downtrodden. So 85 percent or more of our economy is supported by small business, which is one of the reasons I want to give you guys some of the tools that the big businesses use and the people that have made great impact in the small business and entrepreneurial world for you to examine and um, implement. Now, there are... Um, multiple ideas I'm going to give you here. If you just took one, if you just took one of these ideas and you started to implement it today, it is going to make a difference in your business. It's going to make a difference in whether or not you thrive after this, or if you um, are struggling from here on to the rest of the year and beyond. So I really want um, to be part of the success factor for small businesses. And I want to give you part of that. So before I jump into this, what we're talking about today is creating multiple revenue streams in your small business. The majority of millionaires on average have eight different streams of revenue coming into their business. So let's, let's look at a revenue stream. If you are, for example, a, we'll use a restaurant. Restaurants are easy for people to understand. Everybody's eaten at a restaurant at one time or another. Um, restaurants, typically their stream of business is people coming in and dining in their restaurant. That is one stream. And so if you are on the four thought of what's happening right now, you've already decided to expand from that stream of income only mostly because you've been forced to. If you haven't, you've just closed your doors and given up, you're going to have a really hard time coming back. And so I don't want that to happen. I want people to have opportunities. So what we're talking about is diversifying different ways that money can come into your business. And um, I'm going to give you I think I came up with six different options. Yes, six different options for you guys to think about this. So before we jump into that, though, like why? Why would you want to have different streams of income? Well, if you tuned in at all to what's happening in the world, um, things like this can happen. Things out of the blue like COVID and you're stuck and you can't continue forward and you can't do business and you're in lockdown and um, you have employees to pay or you have bills to pay or both. Um, and so if your business is shut down, you have no money coming in and that's really scary for people. Um, it can be really hard for you to recover. As I just mentioned, if you're a restaurant and you're like, we're not doing delivery, we're not doing pickup, we're just, everything's closing down. It's going to be really hard for you to come back because you have not remained top of mind with your customers. Now it's not too late. We're not too far in. You can still do this, can still become top of mind with your customers. Um, but if you're not top of mind, they're going to go somewhere else and they're already looking for other places. Um, as well as, you know, there's a lot of fluctuation when you're a small business, whether regardless of what industry you're in, you often, especially um, as a small business, you get stuck between selling, 
you know, more of what you have and then completing the work, selling what you have, completing the work. And it's really hard to get out of that roller coaster mentality when you only have one stream of income. So for example, if you're a web designer, you're completing a web design project and then you're selling the next one. You're completing a web design project and you're selling the next one. There's no off time in there. But if you diversified your stream a little bit, it would take up off a little bit of that pressure and it would enable you to kind of uh, even out that curve of up and down, you know, between not working and getting more work. So um, those are some of the reasons that uh, it's great to diversify your income. Besides, if you can get the right stream coming in, it becomes almost like magical money. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. You have money coming into your bank account that you really didn't have to do anything for. Um, so that brings me to the first, the first option is like, okay, so what can I do? Well, one of my favorite ways to add another stream of income into my business is, and I do this regularly, is to create partnerships with affiliate brands and products. And so for me in my business, I, I still do a lot of web design. So I have an affiliate, um, that I participate in with a web website hosting company. Um, all of my website hosting goes through them. It doesn't cost my clients anything. And every time I send somebody to them, they pay me um, as well as email marketing. So if you know, uh, email marketing is a big piece of a sales funnel and I have a company that I really like and I stay on top of what they're doing so that I can teach other people about it and then I promote them. I promote them as my go-to um, email marketing service and every time I send somebody to them and they become a client, I get paid for that. And so I want you to brainstorm, you know, if you just want to pause this for a minute and brainstorm some ideas of products or services that you currently use in your business that you could become an affiliate partner for them, whether you're promoting it to your customers or you're promoting it to other businesses that you know in the same boat. And so I have some um, options, but if you uh, want to pause this for a minute, you can do that and brainstorm your ideas and then come back. Um, or I'm just gonna jump into it. So if you are a restaurant, there's a few different things you could do. And I'm using restaurants today just because it makes it easy uh, for everybody to understand. So this can be done in any business. I just am have I'm just happen to be using a restaurant as an example. So for example, if you have a winery that's local, maybe you partner with them and every time that you sell a bottle or you complete a bot every time you buy a bottle of wine from them um, and you promote them as the winery, maybe the winery pays you a percentage. Or um, if you had a different cooking products that you use in your kitchen. So you've seen this, um, I'm sure in different bigger restaurants, but um, I ran into a gal yesterday that has a barbecue company. She does barbecue sauce, but if she didn't have her own barbecue sauce, for example, or she used like maybe they have coleslaw with their barbecue and she uses a special sauce that she gets locally. And every time that she sells a bottle of that coleslaw sauce to her customers, the coleslaw sauce lady would then pay her for that. Um, that would be an affiliate. Also, um, a great one is, um, you know, restaurants specifically have reservation software. A lot of them, you know, use uh, online software to create to collect reservations. If you are promoting that software for them, um, credit card processing, if you're promoting credit card processing for that company, get on their affiliate program. A lot of those companies have programs. Um, cookbooks, so maybe you don't have your own cookbook, but you have a local cookbook author that you maybe feature one of their recipes. And then every time that that person buys or somebody that comes, you know, from your audience to purchase a cookbook, that cookbook author would then pay you a, a commission. So um, affiliates are just based on things that you taking a look around in your business and seeing what products and services that you use that you love and that you would want to promote, and then reach out to those companies and see if they have affiliate programs. And if not, encourage them to create one because that could be a great revenue, um, a referral stream for them is that they're now connecting to other businesses. And so um, the other one that I wanted to mention here is um, selling other people's programs. And so if you were a restaurant and say you partnered with a local chef and that chef happened to have online cooking classes that they did that they sold. So they maybe they have an online cooking class membership and it's $10 a month. 
Well, every time, so maybe you feature one of the recipes that they um, have in that cooking class, you get permission to do that in the restaurant. And every time that somebody signs up for that membership, then that, um, that program, you're selling that program for them. You know, you can learn to make this with, by, you know, Joe Chef over here. Um, he talks, he does this many recipes a month in his membership program. And every time they sign up, it's seamless for the customer. They don't know that you're an affiliate. You're just telling them about this as a service to them. Um, but that membership program, the person running that, so the chef or their team or whoever it is that's running that online cooking would then pay you maybe 10% of every person every month that goes through that. So if somebody signs up and they, it's, you know, let's say it's $20 a month, they would pay you $2 a month. And so by the end of the year, it'd be $24, um, which doesn't seem like a lot, but if you do that times 10 people, that's $240. If you do it to a hundred people, that's $2,400. So it helps grow their business, but it also gives you some repetitive income in your business. So I just kind of want you to brainstorm like what those opportunities would be um, to uh, partner with somebody and promote their, their products and services. So that leads me to the next one, which is you could offer additional products and services in your business. So if we're going back to the restaurant, um, idea you could offer you know for example a lot of the restaurants here are offering boxed meals whether prepared or not prepared um and they are available for pickup and delivery and so they've had to like pivot really quickly from dine in and instead of just delivery like sometimes people are like i don't really know what to get and then they you know they wait till the last minute but if you give them the opportunity to pack it to buy you know a um pre-packaged meal with the directions, whether it's to heat it up or to cook it, um, that's a great way to diversify your offering. Or let's say you have um, different spices that you use. I know there's the melting pot here. I don't know if everyone has the melting pot, but they have their, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a certain spice mix that they put on everything. And um, they sell that in their restaurant. Well, that came about probably because someone asked for it, which we're gonna get to in a minute. Or maybe you have a cookbook of all your recipes that you serve or your, you know, the, the top favorite recipes that um, you've served in your restaurant or a collaboration of recipes of everybody that's on your cooking staff and you create a cookbook and you sell the cookbook. Um, there's some other, uh, you know, options for that as far as, um, you know, going along with creating even merchandise, which is one of my other tips, is that maybe you have t-shirts, maybe you have like a favorite coffee mug, maybe you have um, hats or beer mugs or wine glasses or any of that stuff. I've seen this show up in many, many different places um, throughout my journey. I know there's a winery that I went to downtown and they actually, um, sold you your own engraved to um, wine tasting glass with their um, wine tasting sampler. And so it was, I don't know, it was like $6 more or something to get this glass. But, you know, I was out with a friend and we wanted to commemorate our time together. And so, of course, we both bought that glass. And now whenever I drink out of that glass, I think of her and that memory. And I love that. Um, a great one who's done this, who is one of my favorite local restaurants is Snooze. And they have not only apparel, so they have Snooze t-shirts that are snarky and kind of go with their brand. But, um, Snooze has very unique coffee cups and um, they are created by a, a, a local potter and everybody kind of wants one of those coffee cups because it has like this perfect place for your thumb to sit. And so anyway, they sell their coffee cups and it all came about from tip number, um, I'm gonna say this is tip number four, which is to start asking your customers, like what do they wanna see? Or if you keep hearing the same thing, I wish you guys had, blank um, in your business, then that's something to create. So for example, um, maybe there's a resource that you reference all the time, or there's a, a few things that you reference um, all the time with clients and they, they ask you, you're like, oh, I wish this was in a document. We'll create that. And you know, you could sell it for $9, but that may not seem like a lot, but if it continues to sell for nine or $19 again and again and again, then it's worth creating that, you know, it's worth the time to put into it. Um, so, you know, asking customers what they want is a really great way for you to figure out, you know, what would be a good seller before investing a lot of capital into 
uh, creating it or um, you know getting t-shirts printed or anything like that if you have people ask a lot um, again and again then that's probably a good sign to you know order maybe a small batch and try it out and you could even put in there um, for example if you were gonna order specialized t-shirts you could even put in there a limited um, version or something i'm trying to think of the word that you would put on there but you know limited time or um original member of the t-shirt club or something like that just to make it fun and see how they go um but that's a great way to come up with ideas so it could be spices it could be cookbooks it could be merchandise it could be um any kind of piece of your business that people ask for all the time and so um the next recommendation that I have for you is think about what other services you could offer with your business. So if we're going back to our restaurant example, this is where it gets kind of fun. Maybe you do um, right now because we're all in lockdown. Maybe you do some online cooking classes and you maybe you do the first one free, see how it goes and you or you do it for a small fee and you say, hey, we're going to log in. Everybody's going to get their stuff set up. This is what you need. You send them a supply list. You create the cooking class. Um, you give them a, a grocery list of what to purchase and then you hold a cooking class just like you would in real life um, for that audience. And you can then record that and sell the recording later. There's another stream of inner, of um, revenue. The live class is one cost, the recorded class is another. And those are two different streams. So you, you see how this can um, build on itself. Like everything in your business should have pr three or four reasons for putting time into it. Um, so that you can create money off of it later. And that's really what I want you to kind of think about. That's where I want you to start this brainstorming. If you're gonna create something like, what are four different ways you can use that later to um, make additional income? So maybe you're doing those classes online, they're really popular, and so you then, when we can open back up again, you open up a Sunday morning cooking class because you serve dinner. I'm just gonna throw that out there. You're a dinner time restaurant, so you have you know Saturday and Sunday morning cooking classes that are live, you charge double because you're live now and you're providing all the ingredients, and then you also record those, and you record the testimonials from those so that you can use them later to go with the other pre-recorded classes or you can mimic them in an online option. So there's there's now three different streams of interview, of um, revenue that you can use from one idea. Um, and then you could also offer, like say you're a sit down restaurant, but you wanna have an additional offering for people that kind of want something on the go. Um, so you create a food truck and you go to all of the, like in Colorado, for sure, there's wineries and um, tons of breweries who don't have food licenses, and so they hire out food trucks. Well, a lot of those food trucks don't do well because they only show up at those places, um, and now they can't go to any of them because they're shut down. And so how do you create an opportunity to still serve from the food truck um, when you don't have that option. So it could go either way. Maybe you, you take the food truck and you go into a um, brick and mortar location or you have a brick and mortar location and you create a food truck for um, different times of the year or for different product offerings. So a great example of this, we have an ice cream store um, locally in where I live and um, their ice cream is ridiculously good. And so it's called Scrumptious. Um, and they had two, they have two locations they have, and they're kind of in a, like a walking um, area of restaurants and shops and different things. So little kind of old town areas. And um, they just had those two brick and mortar locations. And then they added two food trucks to go to all of the different festivals. So they could still serve ice cream and boost their um, notoriety and the uh, getting in front of more people. And so right now, of course, that is a little bit different scenario, but in the summers they would do all of the parades, all the festivals, all the, because we have a ton of like uh, 
different little festivals all throughout Colorado. You know, some of them are harvest, some of them are like springtime. So it was a great opportunity for them to scale their business, sell um, ice cream at those festivals, get their name out there, do some additional marketing that really didn't cost them much except for a food truck. So um, that would be another opportunity. And then I talked about um, merchandise. And then the last one I have for you is, you know, if you, and this has come up multiple times during this COVID-19 thing, but if you are currently, say, a retail establishment, how do you then uh, move into the wholesale market as well? And this is in the, um, specifically the food industry or vice versa. So there's been tons of people that are in the wholesale industry that only typically sell to restaurants and uh, coffee shops and all those high high end, you know, the the actual food providers in our state. And when all of those things shut down or minimize their orders, they were they still had a supply chain to fulfill. And so they created retail um, options for their products and services. And a lot of them are offering free delivery. And so they're just doing whatever it takes to stay in business. But I'm like, you are on a gold mine. There are people, especially people that are food snobs, and I'm totally raising my hand right now, who want super uh, high-end ingredients, who want fresh ingredients, and will pay for them. Um, to I, I'm really hoping that people do not just shut off that retail option. Um, because they're seeing such big success for it. And so how can you look at that at your own, uh, in your own business? And I've used a lot of food examples today, but you know, how would this look for you um, as a small business owner? Well, let's say you, um, you design websites. Let's just say your website design is easy for me. So you design websites and you create some templates that you can then, um, white label for other companies that they can sell to their customers. And so you've created the templates and then they buy them from you and sell them as a service to their client as though they provided that. So that would be a way for you to, to reverse engineer your websites. So the, the company um, that is say a marketing agency will then purchase your websites to use with their clients so they don't have to design them, but then they pay you. Um, so you can't market yourself that way, but you could definitely increase your revenue by partnering with all those different marketing agencies to get your websites out there. So I hope this has given you some inspiration, all these different ideas about getting uh, some di- diversification into your business as far as revenue streams. It makes it much easier for you to stay afloat float and to, um, you know, keep revenue coming in when things do slow down. Everybody has a slow period. So this is a great way to kind of even out that curve of the slow period. And um, I encourage you to brainstorm, you know, what I, which of these ideas is going to work for your business? Which of these ideas would um, be easy for you to implement? And then just take one, just take one idea and go put it, you know, start mapping it out today and figure out how you can get it out there either before we go off lockdown or right after to start to generate some excitement and some energy back into your business. In the meantime, I hope you're all staying well. If you have any questions, I would love for you to come join me in the Facebook group. And I am working on a brand new download for you guys that I hope to have ready for you next week. So look forward to that. Um, And if you are not currently on my email list, get on my email list. You can do that at my website at alisaconnor.com. And I always, as always, the show notes for this episode will also be available there, alisaconder.com forward slash eight three. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, and uh, come visit me over on the Facebook group. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great week. Just a quick reminder, don't forget to grab that free ideal client worksheet that will help you map out who your ideal client is, where they're hanging out, and how you can connect with them better so that you can quit fretting about your marketing, get out of the overwhelm, and start attracting the clients that you want to work with that will pay you and grow your business. You can grab that at alisaconnor.com forward slash ideal client.